great if you have your Bibles. Let's go ahead and open those up today. We're going to be in James chapter 1, James chapter 1, looking at verse 13 through 18. And we are continuing our devotional series on the foundations of the faith, right? We've been talking about foundations matter. Uh, we live in a McDonald's culture, you know, we want that fast food and we bring that same concept into the Christian experience. We're like, man, I should already be a pastor. I should be, you know, changing continents. I've been saved for the last three weeks, right? And it doesn't work like that. Not with the things that are real. Uh, in, in the Bible, the work of Jesus Christ is real. And because of that, before he begins to build the floors on the house, he first has to set a strong foundation. And even if you've been saved for a while, if your foundation has eroded, we've got to refortify it. And this week, we're going to talk about the foundational Bible teaching of temptations. Temptations. Jesus taught us to pray, deliver us from temptation, Lord. Lead me not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil one. And we're going to talk about that today. So James chapter 1, we're going to answer the question, where do temptations come from? Where do they come from? You know, what is a temptation and where do they come from? So James chapter 1, we're going to begin verse 13. James says, let no one say when he is tempted. So James says, don't listen to this from other people. If people start saying stuff different from the Bible, if somebody calls himself a pastor or a Bible teacher, or they position themselves in their life, your life, and they say things that contradict to the Bible, don't listen. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. As if God was sending this temptation your way. It's not true. Right? That's not what God does. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. So God isn't in heaven struggling with the enemy, going, man, I, I really shouldn't watch this thing on TV or something like this. That's not God. God is holy. But he also doesn't send temptations our way. That's the enemy. That's the enemy of your soul. It's not the Lord, and we need to realize that. We need to recognize that. And listen to this. But each one, note this, is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Now realize this. Temptation, is a, it's a sin. It's, it's something that God in his word tells us this is not good for you. And, and the enemy says, why don't you do this? It'll make you happy. We see it in the Garden of Eden. Did God indeed say you can't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Yeah, he did. He said it clearly. And then he says, well, he said that because it'll actually make you more like him. He doesn't want there to be two gods now, right? There was no chance of Adam and Eve ever becoming God, just like there's no chance of you becoming God. We're not God. He is God. We are not. We're his creation, just like Satan is a created being. But what we need to realize is temptation what it's looking for, it's looking for the enemy within us, our flesh, these inner desires. Note this, when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed, verse 15, then when desire has conceived, it births to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth, note this, death. See the progression here in the Bible. Starts with your own desires. This is how you're drawn away into temptation. Temptation is a sin that Satan uses to try to lure us away from the Lord to get us to rebel against God, his word, what he says is best, what he says is right, what he says is good, what he says is evil. Don't do those things. Satan tries to lure us away with something called temptations. And then he uses our own desires. Then our own desires rile up. Then we're enticed. And then when desire is conceived... When desire conceives, it brings forth sin. And when sin is full grown, notice it brings forth death. Now, I'm going to share this uh, saying with you every devotion this week. And it's a simple saying, and I'd encourage you to try to memorize this. Sow a thought, sow a thought, reap an action. You sow an action, you reap a habit. You sow a habit, you'll reap a character. And when you sow a character in your life, you'll reap a destiny. That's the progression. It's very similar to what James gives us here. We, what we think is going to cause us to do actions. That's why God wrote a book, so we can think on his word. The actions will turn into habits in our life. It'll turn into the disciplines, what, what we do. Then the habits 
develop character in us. It becomes who we are. And then who we are will determine our destiny. James says, listen, God's not the one tempting, but what does God actually send? Look what it says here as we wrap up verse 16. It says, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. James tells us, listen, God doesn't send us temptations. What God sends us are good things. And that's a key here. What is temptation? It's a sin that Satan uses, like a fisherman uses a lure to catch fish, to hook them, to get that hook in them and then pull them in and cook them up and eat them, right? It's a temptation. It's sin that Satan uses to lure us away from God, and he uses our own desires inside. But it comes from the enemy, from the culture, from the world. It in cahoots with our flesh. But what does God give us? He gives us good gifts. And listen, temptation is something you and I need to let go of. We need to let go of those sins so we could grab hold of all that God has for us. All that he has for us. A foundational principle. You'll be tempted, but God's going to deliver you. Know what it is, where it comes from, and turn to the Lord. He has good things in store for you. And Father, I pray for your people. As we study about temptation this week, I pray, Lord, I know your people are going to be tested in what we're studying in your word. So God, give them strength to, to say yes to you, Jesus, to say no to temptation by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen.